Cisco Firepower in action. All right, let's go ahead and start up our Netcat listener. We'll go ahead and start the attacker machine. It's the same machine that we're listening on. This is going to get the LDAP server or the malicious LDAP server up and running as well as the web server that passes back the exploit class to take advantage of the vulnerable system. Now the goal here is to pass this string to the vulnerable system. It's going to log it and, and then do the JNDI lookup, which is going to reach out to our LDAP server. Once it does that, we're going to obviously pass back that exploit class and take advantage of that system. So let's go. Go ahead and hit login here. Now this is passing through firepower, but in detection mode. So we can see that we did get reverse shell and that's expected in fact, because we're not doing any blocking. There's no security intelligence enabled. It's pretty clean. Other than a couple of rules have been created to allow to connect to the web server in the DMZ zone as well as having the ability to do detection. So we're gonna be able to see, or should be able to see, an alert in Firepower. So you can see here we're navigating on the system, we had access, all is good. Okay, so let's go ahead, I'm gonna go back, refresh this so we can get ready for a test once we validate that we actually detected the event. Now we're in unified events here and look at that, here it is. It says would have dropped. And the reason why it says would have, it's again, it's in IDS mode. And there we go, the intrusion message. Indicator of compromise, LDAP's the application, client applications, LDAP client. And we can even see the web browsing to port 8000, that's the adversary is housing that, and 9001, that's our netcat listener. Now let's go ahead and check our IPS rule here. Now the reason why we didn't block it, as I mentioned, even though it states block here, on all of them, it says block by default, the mode was detection. So let's turn this to prevention. That's saved, that's good. Now let me just jump to policy so you can see how it's pulled together if you've not seen Firepower before. And let's jump into our access control rule. And this is the rule that allows access from the internet to that DMZ web server that's vulnerable. And let's go to inspection and we can see there's that intrusion policy. So we're good to go here. We'll save that out and we'll go ahead and deploy this policy. Go ahead and hit deployment, select the device, hit deploy, add some information. We're good to go. That'll deploy, that'll take a minute or so. We're not gonna sit here and watch that. That's not why we're here. So I'll fast track that. Let's jump into analysis, go back to unified events to get ready for another attempt here. Let's see what happens. Now, let's get our Netcat listener up and running. The adversary components that we need in order to connect back to us from a, an LDAP perspective and web server is already up and running. We did that um, just a few moments ago. Let's grab that nice string that's gonna get logged and leverage JNDI to do the lookup and bad should happen, right? Now this is going, let's check our terminal here and nothing seems to be coming back. Okay, well, let's see. Something happened, that's for sure. Oh, look at that. We see an intrusion block here. So we can see that there's an intrusion, it was dropped. If we drop that down, there's the details, right? Indicator of compromise, JNDI, LDAP, client, all the details. And here's the block action as well. The client, LDAP, we know, application ID, all that good stuff. Okay, so that worked as expected. Now let's just go into the intrusion events itself and, and dig a little bit deeper into the data. Now we can see two events here and that's exactly what we should see. The adversary's 255.129, but it says would have dropped and the other one is dropped. So whenever you see would have dropped, that means you're in detection mode and dropped obviously means it's dropped the packet and in prevention mode. Now when we drill into it, we get to see the rule, 
a little bit of details, we can actually take action right from here. So we can do a who is, we can add it to a, a block list, we could do some investigations right from here. We can also take actions as well. And the nice thing that we have here is the payload is available to us in the web GUI, right? We don't need to go in, download the PCAP, although we can, and look at it in Wireshark, although we can, I can see it in the browser. Okay, so that's pretty neat. That worked out as expected. Let's go ahead and turn off inspection for a second here. I'm gonna show you another way Maybe you don't have an intrusion prevention system. So what can you do to mitigate that risk? So the one thing we can do is create a block action that not only looks at 1389, because that's the port we're using, actually looks for LDAP. Now this would be a next gen firewall capability if you're doing application based control, but I could do it based on port, obviously fairly trivial to bypass, but I'm gonna do it based on application here just to show the next gen capability. Now, again, we're not gonna go through the deployment. I'll save you the cycles there, but we gotta deploy because we are making a policy change. Let's go to unified events. Now, the goal here is whether we're looking for LDAP, the port, or the application. So depending on the firewall ca capability that you have, I have the ability to mitigate the risk, even though I didn't stop the compromise. So the compromise is gonna happen here. Right? There's not an intrusion mechanism to, to look at the payload, but it can't return the call back. You can see that, that there was nothing there in our Netcat listener. And when we go ahead and check the connection events here, we can see that this was blocked. It's 1389, it just happens to be the port that, that we're leveraging here. We can see the application protocol again because we have a next gen firewall. But again, if you control your outbound ports, you can certainly minimize your risk. Now again, layers are gonna matter. So when we go into connection events, we can also see that here, block action um, and details about that, that block action. Now, what would you really do in the real world? Would you just have, if you had a next gen firewall, would you just do you know, LDAP outbound? No, you would actually layer your defense here. You would have both the Firewall type rule blocking outbound LDAP or any one of those protocols that are being leveraged and you would turn on your intrusion prevention capability um, and mitigate that risk. So let's go ahead and deploy. This has now got multiple layers of defense in place. And, and remember, you would have, in fact, you would have security intelligence. So some of those bad IPs that Talos has marked as bad are going to get blocked. You're gonna have the intrusion capability. So if there is a crafted packet or payload being sent, you can mitigate that risk. And again, you'll have that firewall rule outbound to minimize the risk. And those layers are gonna help you win the game.